So they're giving out these National Day goodie bags kind of thing. And when I got mine, I also got this flag, which is optional, but the enthusiastic lady at the counter looked like she would be pretty disappointed if I left without a flag, so I got one as well. Okay, let's see what we have here, shall we? Ooh, quite a lot of stuff. Old chunky curry puff flavored potato chips. I'm not sure if that sounds good. Huh. What in the... Not one, not two, not even three. Five new reusable face masks. I guess these packs are meant for, you know, you get one pack per household. So I guess they were preparing for people that have five people in the family. This is why I feel bad about it you know, getting this stuff, you know, because I'm the only one over here and now I've got five face masks. I'll save some for my exile housemate, I guess. I've got some disposable ones as well. How many are these? Four disposable face masks. I have about 50 that's still in stock, so... Hand sanitizers. Don't exactly use this a lot, but... Appreciate the thought. Chrysanthemum tea. Ah, oh, that's something that I can get behind. Not the best quality. It's like... It's half mast now, which is not a good sign, but... It's kind of nice, I guess. I don't know what this is. It says Dear Singapore. So I guess you know you could submit some kind of a message. But some nice stickers that you could I don't know stick somewhere I guess. And this, this is nice. They're actually giving up thermometers. This is actually practical stuff. So oral, rectal or underarm. Just FYI. Appreciate this. Yeah, what's this? Okay, I think it's a fridge magnet. Focus. There we go. Fridge magnet, I guess. More stickers. And that's about it. Even the bag is of pretty decent quality, so I maybe we'll find some use for it. But... Gotta say, this is kind of nice. So I'm really not sure what I'm gonna do with this. One of my old housemates used to use this as a curtain. This seems too large to be used even for that purpose because my a window is this size and this is... Maybe I'll just hang it, you know, outside the balcony. The material is kind of not bad, I'd say. So I'm done with the hiking video, finally, feels good. It'll be out by the time you see this video, so go ahead and check it out and hopefully you'll like it. I'm pretty happy about it, I think that turned out pretty well. It was fun, actually. Like Robbie talked about how... Whenever I'm editing a video, it can be like opening Christmas presents. It feels that much fun. And then when I wake up in the morning, I'm like, oh man, I can't wait to get working on this video. This video was a little bit like that. Like I find myself every day, like looking forward to the end of the work day so that I can go and continue working on the video. And I think that happens when the video is shaping up into something that you would like it to be. And so you're just keen to keep on putting on more touches to mold it into this creation that you envision. And I think this video was something like that. So I'm pretty happy with it. I think that it's significantly better than the last video for a variety of reasons. Number one, the hype is actually better, I think. And also I've made the video shorter than the last one. So there's more content packed into less time. So I think that it'll be 
less boring in a sense. Also, I've decided to reuse some old music this time instead of loop. I think the last video looped some new music for too long. So it got a, the, the music got a bit monotonous after a while. I've also learned quite a few things since last time about you know camera settings and about color grading and all. So I feel like I've really poured all of myself, all everything that I've learned into this video. I just try to make it as perfect, as professional, and as you know, just appealing and attractive and aesthetic as I can. So I am fairly happy with the result. The only downside, so to speak, is that I couldn't have done this with a more interesting hype just because of COVID we can't travel. It'd be great if I could do this on a you know a Japanese mountain hike for example but since COVID makes that impossible. Anyway I feel like I've come quite a bit you know since I started doing all this video stuff and uh, hopefully that shows in the video. You know the funny thing is I didn't even feel particularly inspired while I was filming this hike. I was just kind of going through the motions. I think that I've just really come quite a ways in terms of post-production and actually I'm pretty happy about that thing that my post-production chops it's nowhere near professional of course right? because I don't really know what I'm doing half the time I'm just slapping things on and it's kind of a trial and error process like that baby steps So you remember that flag that I got from the enthusiastic lady the other day? Well, my friend was saying that he would like to have it, so I'm just gonna go and pass it to him. By the way, you may have noticed this mask. This is one of the new masks that came in the pack. I gotta say, it, look pretty, it looks pretty good. It's got a nice swanky little logo over the side there. Pretty nice. looks like shuttered shops yeah, yeah. so it looks it just looks like a street where all the shops are shuttered we're in the store around why are you looking at on the back anyway We went to Sim Lim. I went to Sim Lim, but then apparently we're going to Boogies to eat because he already got his computer. So I went there for nothing. Oh yeah, is it like prominent in terms of religion? Yes. Okay, so it does a religion not because it's like a spectacle or anything. Yeah. Right? Okay, that makes sense. Tell them what it is, right? It's not that old actually, it's 1884. Take now one thing I like is like neighborhoods with character, like flavor. And this place kind of qualifies. It's kind of nice to walk around, I guess. There's a Taiwanese place over there. Taiwanese like eatery? A few different Taiwanese. So like a little Taiwanese area-ish yep. thing here.
you do that? Why? Drawn to the drone boxes. Yeah. Why are they drone boxes in yeah, unattended? Like yeah. Yeah. So sad. This is like a very, a very quiet. Uh, Nakano Broadway. <laughs> so in case you're wondering why we're just randomly wandering around, it's because he bought a PC, we're waiting for it to get assembled, so we're just kind of loitering around. It's only 390 I suppose. For 200 grams, that's actually that's actually not too bad. So, sometime near the beginning of the year, end of January, beginning of February-ish, I set a goal for myself, and that is to make a vlog every week for half a year. In view of the people that have been able to do this vlogging business every single day, I told myself, hey, let's set a more realistic goal and make a vlog every week. Doesn't matter what's in the vlog, doesn't matter what the content is, doesn't matter if the vlog is good or bad, just make something every single week. That was what I told myself. What you're watching now is the final vlog in this six month period. So I managed to do it and I'm quite happy with that. I think that uh, it's been a pretty cool journey. I think that I've improved uh, quite a bit. Almost certainly a lot more than if I didn't discipline myself and force myself to make something every single week. I guess that's how we work as human beings, right? We would improve faster if we push ourselves. And that's what I did. I think that, you know, if one takes a look at the stuff that I was producing in, near the beginning of the year, around the time where I first got this camera, and compared it with the stuff, you know, the vlogs of these past few weeks, I think that you'd be able to see a market difference. The, 
improvement I think is noticeable and not just in terms of camera technique and color grading and all that stuff that you know that I actually know something about now I think that this exercise of talking to the camera has also come some way right I think that at least when I went back and watched you know my very first attempts to actually talk to the camera it was I could tell it was extremely difficult it was awkward it was cringy I'm not saying that I'm doing it well now I feel like I still have some ways to go there the thoughts don't quite translate into words quite the way I want them but I think that you know it has come quite a long way there is some semblance of a process for me to you know just express myself in front of the camera and that's also an ongoing uh, work in progress I guess so what happens from here on out the main thing is that I'll be dissolving the requirement to produce a vlog every single week I will be only vlogging whenever I think that there's something vlog worthy whenever I feel like doing a vlog whenever something happens that I think you know is worth recording so immediately what that probably would mean is that the vlog will take a pause because I'll probably you know unwind a bit and kind of take a break but I don't foresee it being too long there are a few things that are most likely gonna happen in my life soon that I'm most likely gonna vlog for example when I actually manage to leave Singapore and get back to KL I'll probably vlog that process I'll probably produce at least one vlog in my home in KL just for the sake of it but the point is that uh, it won't be forced anymore for the time being I'll just do it in my own time and according to how I would like to do it so in parallel with this resolution to one vlog per week for half a year was another resolution where I wanted to produce a hiking video once a month for the duration of this year that has been you know much more bumpy just because of COVID like I can still vlog during the COVID period it'd just be very boring vlogs because it's all just me doing chores at home but hiking my hiking activity has actually been really affected by COVID for the obvious reason that I can't travel so I've been trying to do some hikes in Singapore where I'm able to and uh, so far I have missed one month which is last month July June June so I just released a video that was for July so I missed June and I'm not sure how well I'll be able to follow up on for the rest of the year it depends on you know how the situation with COVID unfolds if I manage to get back to KL then that at least opens up quite a few more avenues for me to do some hiking in Malaysia it's, you know, Malaysia is just a much larger place than Singapore is so we'll see how that goes since I failed to produce one every month I still hope to be able to make up for it by just having the numbers tally so maybe what I'll do is I'll make a video kind of a uh, look back review maybe gimmicky ranking video of sorts of my past hikes and then you know I'll just add that to the channel as well we'll see I haven't really decided yet but anyway to any of you who've been watching even just some of these vlogs thank you very much for coming along on this journey the journey isn't over there will be more vlogs coming along but almost certainly there will not be one next week for a change so thank you very much for watching I'll see you the next time I make a vlog You know the other somewhat more sinister side effect of all this vlogging business has been that I've been getting further and further in the know with all this uh, camera stuff poison and it's poison because camera stuff is incredibly expensive it's ridiculous how expensive it is I use it the most expensive aspect of my immediate life used to be you know my computer equipment, my laptops and you know peripherals and whatever it is I use for work and for gaming and for that stuff camera stuff is a lot more expensive, it's crazy like this camera, this camera is it's a 5 year old camera and it's nowhere near top of the line it's a point and shoot, it's not even an SLR, it doesn't even do interchangeable lenses so this camera is not that expensive It's it's it was like 600 Singapore dollars actual cameras that people are using now is expensive and 
these new cameras that are now coming out, I even know their names because I'm so far into this rabbit hole now. The you know the Sony A7S III and the Canon R5, they are expensive. They take beautiful footage. Don't get me wrong. But dang, the amount of money you need to pay in order to get from this to that is insane. I'm still pretty satisfied with this camera. There are a few things that I'm starting to have gripes about this camera, especially the slow motion performance, because it, this thing takes slow mo at 720p, and YouTube doesn't even consider that HD anymore. So, price tags is a strong deterrent. So, I'm most likely going to stick with this for a significant near future, but who knows where we'll go from here. But yeah it's kind of bad that I can actually start appreciating the quality changes when you as you go up the camera ladder now, right? This is a huge improvement from my camera, from my phone camera. I can now appreciate what this cannot do and what those other cameras can. And this one can do a fair bit already. So there's still a lot for me to learn here, I'm sure. So I'll be happy to stick with this for a while. But dang, those things now constitute genuine temptations to me. So, it's a scary thought. Why do cameras have to be so expensive, man? Jeez.